Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and remember to subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon. All right, so what's the point of this robot? Let's explore how this side of the business might play out. Let's work under the assumption that Tesla will sell them to the public and not lease them out. We're told that the purpose of these robots are to do repetitive, boring, and dangerous tasks. Over time, we expect more versions that will be more advanced and more capable. For example, if we're building a house, we might expect them to do some basic functions, like painting a house, but probably not wire the house to the level of an electrician. The value of these robots will be what applications they're capable of and what jobs they can replace. This will come down to two elements, the physical capabilities of the robots and the intelligence of Dojo. So jobs like mining or construction are more physically demanding than compared to a doctor. The physical jobs will require more evolution of the mechanics of the robot compared to a doctor that can diagnose through software and hardware, aka Dojo. Now, plug this back into the value of these robots. Well, what's the value of replacing a doctor's job? And yes, let's just ignore all the regulation in the health industry in this scenario for now. The mechanical requirements of a robot to diagnose you with an illness are going to be minimal. Now, I believe there'll be accessories for these robots. For example, a medical robot could check your vitals, take blood tests, and all sorts of ways to monitor you. And the robot might have replaceable arms for different applications. All the tests can then be uploaded to Dojo, where one day there may be billions of various tests with associated diagnoses. Dojo would then report back to the robot, possibly more or less in real time, and the robot doctor will then be able to assign extremely high probabilities as to potential ailments. The robot will also know what treatments will have the most likely chance of curing you. But unlike current medical doctors that try to treat the symptoms more than the underlying cause, Perhaps these robots can also track your nutrition and lifestyle too and find out what you might be deficient in. Again, there could be a surgeon doctor where the mechanical requirements would be minimal. The robot surgeon would be highly precise to levels that humans are incapable of. I'm sure you could easily value a doctor robot at well over a million dollars. As for more physical jobs, the robots don't get tired, they don't get sore, they don't need breaks. Apparently the robot can deadlift 150 pounds. That's actually a reasonable amount, more than the average human can lift and it can carry 45 pounds, which is suitable for many applications. Of course, they're limited by five miles an hour too, which could slow them down on a construction site and various other scenarios. But perhaps Dojo will take some time to learn these expertise and it will require training, perhaps as a doctor's assistant to start with. On the other hand, doctors don't really want to train something that will take their job. And these are people's lives. You don't want a robot to prescribe the wrong medication that could potentially be fatal. So what might be the initial application? Perhaps we should look at jobs where less expertise are required. Perhaps running a shop might be more appropriate, at least in commercial purposes to start with. I say commercial purposes as if the robots are initially expensive, then they would need to have applications where they can offer more value than they cost. I think that it's likely to occur in the commercial side rather than domestic use. But even running a store, then the robot needs to become familiar with all these products in the store. If a customer asks for a specific item, then the robot should know exactly how many are in stock along with colors and available sizes. The robot should know where the product is on the shelf too. This would just be stock keeping and probably not too complex. The robot should probably just be able to read the SKUs, shopkeeping units perhaps, and record where each product is located. Of course, customers may move products too, but perhaps that's the job of the robot when there are no customers in the store, to continually manage all the items and keep the store tidy. There'd be no need for a till you could likely pay directly through the robot itself. Whenever inventory of a particular item is low, the robot can automatically order more. This might not work for stores where customers actually require help from the sales staff on particular items relevant to them. For example, a skincare store where the customer might ask what moisturizer is suitable for my skin type. I'm also not sure how the robot would learn that over time. Perhaps they'd serve as an assistant first to learn what the other salespeople say, but then why would a store want to pay to train a robot if it's not actually going to increase profit? So perhaps this means that the corporation that owns the stores would need to create applications that run through the robots to help customers find the right products they want, which may not be easy or feasible and potentially harmful or dangerous, offering the wrong products to the wrong people. I guess it would depend on the intelligence of these machines. A lot of companies will look at these robots as potential liability. On the other hand, their competitors who use them would have a cost advantage of hiring less staff. So is it various apps that we need for the robots to function in various tasks, from working in a clothing store or Walmart to using power tools on a construction site? Then who creates these apps? And how much flexibility would Tesla allow within the app? On a construction site, 
Are you going to let a robot use a nail gun, for example? There'd be plenty of ways in which a robot would have the capabilities to harm a human using power tools. What precautions would test the place to stop such a thing? And how could it really be controlled? As Elon says, because you never know. That's the commercial side. But as for the domesticated side, then there's only so much work that can be done around a house. But maybe you don't own your own robot and the robot just comes in to clean your house every so often, which would be much more feasible than owning it outright. I mean, most people get a cleaner once a week, not daily. But even for a domesticated robot, they could be cooking food with hot oil or boiling water. It's going to take an enormous amount of trust for people to build up until they feel comfortable giving robots such control. I'm not saying the robot will be malicious, necessarily. It might accidentally drop a saucepan of boiling water on the ground just when your child happens to be playing in the kitchen. But imagine if it cooked for you. It'd be able to order all the groceries online for you. They get delivered, then they can track how much you spend on groceries. They'll keep track of what kind of food you like, keep track of your diet intake, recommend food for nutrition you're neglecting. Then it could connect to a medical app or nutrition app so the robot can track your health and keep your diet balanced for your health. The robot could potentially cook to a level we've never seen top chefs even reach. Usually, when we see new industries, the initial products tend to be more expensive and yet more basic. Take, for example, Tesla's initial Roadster compared to the Model Y. The Model Y is significantly cheaper with vastly more features and even better performance. But robots might be a bit different as the features the robots have are to offer you value. You're not going to pay $1 million for something that can only clean your house, no matter how cool it is. Also, businesses charge more because they want to recover a lot of their initial capital expense. However, Tesla probably don't need to worry about recouping capital costs for some time. People are often scared of revolutionary new technologies, generally because they feel threatened their jobs will be replaced. There will likely be Luddites out to destroy these robots. However, as nations discover, the ones that don't adopt new technologies and processes tend to fall behind and lose competitive advantages over time, unless they adapt. Like the Japanese using robots to build their cars, eventually other nations followed suit and it actually ended up creating more jobs, which tends to be the way. Machines create leverage that improve our standard of living. It's not a zero sum game. It just grows the economy. These robots won't get tired. They can work weekends. They can work all night. The batteries might need to charge about one hour a day and work the rest of the time. They also work weekends and holidays. They don't get sick, request overtime or pay rises. They can probably work 160 hours a week. That's four times as many hours as a typical human and possibly working significantly faster and more efficient. Tesla might take ongoing income like FSD rental. If you want your robo to be connected to Dojo, there may be a $200 a month connection fee or something. This could be argued as the most revolutionary new product we've ever seen, perhaps even including the wheel. To start with, I think they'll have to be fairly basic as people will be highly suspicious of them first. Tesla's main marketing will be to assure people they are safe. Perhaps there could be a big button on their chests that you can push and it will immediately disable the power. You also want to be able to disable them remotely, perhaps with an app or even an emergency button somewhere in the house. They could presumably charge reasonably fast and thus not need to be charging over the entire night and could be disconnected from a power source so people feel safe at night. The robots will have cameras. People will be concerned that they're being watched. Its capabilities will be limited initially as you would only feel it comfortable doing basic tasks such as cleaning, tidying, laundry, gardening or assisting in a shop. I think its potential with healthcare would be phenomenal, but I think doctors would have a hard time willing to risk their jobs being replaced. There is so much regulation in healthcare to limit supply of doctors to increase demand, thus increasing their salaries. The medical industry is very slow to adapt to new technologies for this reason. Again, doctors don't want to be replaced with machines, but it would be great to share all the resources and diagnoses of all these doctors in one big brain that could potentially save many lives or even come up with various cures. Free market economists compare this to how the private medical industry has progressed significantly further, using LASIK eye surgery as their example, and the progress that has made over the decades when compared to the rest of the industry. It would only take one incident where a robot injures a human to potentially kill the entire business, and people decide it's not worth the risk, and perhaps government steps in too. But yes, potentially it could make our lives so much easier and give us that much more leisure time and an improved standard of living now, if the robots are replacing basic jobs, then they may only be worth about $15 an hour or so, perhaps even less than that for some jobs. And although they're able to potentially work through nights, well, that's not so relevant if a shop is only open during the day. 
Same if you hired a cleaning robot to clean your house. You want it to work during the day. In other words, there may only be an eight hour window of potential labor each day, but the robot may be more efficient and could potentially clean a house in an hour compared to three hours. But equally, it might be a lot slower, especially when it's limited to five miles an hour. So $15 an hour at eight hours a day, perhaps seven days a week, that's a potential value of $840 a week or around $40,000 a year. I would expect that most businesses would like to recover this cost within three years, but maybe sooner due to it being such a new technology carrying uncertainty. On the other hand, the robot may also offer appeal and shops customers will want to come to your store because they want to be served by a robot. So the price for a robot could be about $100,000. At that price, it would not be worth owning for your home for most people, but could potentially hire one to clean your house. However, some people are rich enough to have live-in maids. At $100,000, this might be a cheaper alternative for them still. And if it can save people 10 hours of labor a week, well, some people make hundreds of dollars an hour. Again, people at this level of income could justify the expense. Within time, then with economies of scale, then the cost would reduce and the application potential would increase. You could have your lawns mowed daily. The robot could walk your dog. It could grow your food, do weeding. It could paint your walls. It could go shopping for you and just about any chore you want. So maybe you will be able to find enough tasks for it. Your house will be tidy every day and your garden immaculate. If we leave it at that, then it's still a big jump in our standard of living. Once you start looking at applications like robot nannies, then it might be a slippery slope. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.